So we started out doing adding polynomials, then we did subtracting polynomials, now we're going to get into multiplying polynomials. And technically the title says and monomials. Uh, we kind of start a little bit more simple. But uh, you're going to find that it's similar in that it's still all with polynomials, but it's, it's going to be different in that uh, we're multiplying. And it's, it's not too much more complex. You just have to be very clear about the difference between the two in your head. Example one. Um, example one is really kind of uh, just trying to like bring back what we did in the past. So first example, I'm just going to go back to, and you probably could skip this if you remember exponents pretty well, but if you have like a 5 squared times a 5 to the third, anybody remember that ends up being a 5 to the, what do you do to the 2 and the 3 when you multiply? Yeah, add them together. Nice. So you have the 5 to the 2 plus 3. So the end result ends up being a 5 to the 5th. Um, and the reason, another way to look at it is, oh, well, 5 squared is just 5 times 5. And 5 to the 3rd is 5 times 5 times 5. So we multiply those together, I have 5 of the 5s, which is 5 to the 5th. Yes? So if you don't know that, it probably would be well to your advantage to write down something like add the exponents. So add the exponents. <coughs> when multiplying powers with the same base. So when multiplying powers with the same base. So add the exponents when multiplying powers with the same base. From there we're going to kind of jump into new stuff. And a lot of it I think for the people that struggle with this is it's really just they look at it and they kind of get intimidated. Uh, you guys, I think, have the math ability to do it. You just have to, you know, it's different, it's weird, but just stick with it. Um, so if we have an x to the fourth times an x squared, that is going to become x to the sixth, right? And I wouldn't necessarily write this down, but if you wanted to, you could say, well, why? You know, well, x to the fourth is four x's all multiplied. x squared is another two, so it's like there's six x's there. It's an x to the sixth, x times itself six times. We okay on that one? Then some of my examples are kind of more basic, but it's somewhat to prove a point that we're going to be able to apply then as we start getting into the real tough ones. If I were to have a 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, the answer is 120, but that's not really the point at what I want to get to in, in this thing here. Well, the point I'm trying to get at is you guys remember switching around numbers. If it's all multiplication, you can change the order, right? So this is going to be the same answer as if I do 2 times 4 times 3 times 5. Anyone remember the name of that property? Not distributive. Commutative. Nice. It's kind of like communication is how I remembered it. It's kind of like A then B or B then A. It's kind of like talking back and forth. Um, but you could then figure out that final answer of 120. If you wanted to chunk it, you could say, okay, this is going to be an 8. This is going to be a 15. So I have 80 plus 40. You know, it gives me the 120. But the more part that I'm trying to get at with this example is you can switch the order of things around and get away with it, if it's all multiplication. Ready to start doing the fun stuff? Oh, it's fun. Um, math is fun. All right, example four we must be up to. So now is when we start actually doing things like monomials or something. I'm going to say I have a 2x squared times a 4x. The answer here... Well, maybe I shouldn't say the answer. Kind of the, the, the steps, if you wanted to. Do you agree 2x squared is really kind of like a 2 times x squared? And a 4 times 4x is really the same as like a 4x? So one way to view it is though you switch those middle two things around, just like I did in that last example where I switched the 3 and the 4. So you could say this is the same thing as 2 times 4 times x squared times x. Yes? And then 2 times 4 is... 8. You have to be a little careful. You add exponents, but you multiply the numbers. It's, you have to keep it straight. It's easy to make that mistake. 2 times 4 is 8, and x squared times x to the first just is uh, x to the third. Now, if you're trying to do this with all the problems, especially once you hit algebra and we start getting like real kind of beastly things, it, it's going to um, take you a lot more time. Uh, but what you could do is really look at this first one and look at, well, how do we get the 8? Well, do you agree we just did the 2 times 4, and that gave me the 8? 
And then we did the x squared times x. That gave us the x to the third. So really multiplying monomials, you just multiply the coefficients, multiply the numbers in front of the variables together, and then multiply the variables with their exponents together. All right, now we're going to get... Should I write that? It's really just coefficient times coefficient. You're, nah, you'll get it. All right, example four. Five. Now is when we really start kind of up in the ante a little bit. I'm going to say I have a 4x, then a parenthesis, uh, 3x squared, minus 8x, plus 2. When we look at this, it's just a big distributive property question, right? Is that a 3? Yeah, it's supposed to be a 3. I don't know if my fixing it made it better or worse. So we do the what's in front, the 4x times the first term, the 3x squared. Then we'll have to do 4x times that middle clump, the minus 8x. And then we'll do the 4x times the plus 2 there at the end. But that first one, 4x times 3x squared, what does that give us? 12. I like the 12. 4 times 3 is 12. x times x squared is x to the third. third. You guys tracking with me? Just add the exponents for our x's. All right, now that middle one, I had the 4x times the negative x, negative 8 to the x. So my number is going to be negative. negative, I like that, 32. 4 times 8 is 32. Then how many x's do I have there? x, yep, x squared. Because I have an x to the first with my 4x and an x to the first with my negative 8x. You guys good so far? Okay. And then the last thing, we do the 4x times that last term, the plus 2, gives me positive... 8x. Because so I don't have a, a x after the 2, it's just positive 8x. Does that make sense? Because if it does, really, you kind of have the section mastered. Okay. I'm going to try to jump to an example that's a little bit dicier, but really I can't go too much harder than that. If you get 5, you really kind of have a section. Um, so I have a negative 2x to the third. And then a 8x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 9. And a little bit later on, we'll actually start doing like binomials here. So you'll have like a x to the seventh minus 2x to the third and all the other things. That's when it really starts getting fun. Kind of crazy. Okay. All right. If we do this first chunk here, negative 2 times negative 8 is... Negative 16, and then we'd have a x to the, I should have Franklin with that. Eight. x to the 8, good. We could do the 3 plus 5. And next we could do the minus 2x to the 3rd times a minus x to the 4th. Ooh, what's our number? 1. Because this is kind of like a 1 right there, right? So I like the 2. Plus 2 or minus 2? Plus 2. Because if you take it little steps, we're doing this positive, I'm sorry, this negative 2 here times kind of like a negative 1. So, and then x to the 7th, I like that. All right, next we have this negative 2x to the 3rd times a positive 3x squared. So my number is going to be negative... Negative 6x to the 3rd. Yep, that's negative 6x to the 5th. Then we're up to our very last thing. So I have my negative 2x to the 3rd times a negative 9. Plus 18x to the third. And... Woohoo! That's it for this. I have one more example, but it's it's not with all the variables and stuff. Any questions before I hit the last thing? Kind of fun, really. I think. Last thing they want to talk about like scientific notation, and realistically, you're probably going to do a lot of these with your calculator when you get to higher math. But um, I'll maybe title it so multiplying. Uh, scientific notation. Actually, it's really not bad at all. It's really quite easy. Um, so if you were to have, compared to what we were doing, so say you have a 2 times 10 to the 5th times uh, 8.5 times 10 squared. And this is what they'll do in some of those RTI tests. You'll start seeing these next year. Uh, do this without your calculator. And for those, the multiplication that I have here in between my two numbers in scientific notation 
is really the same as this multiplication there. So really I just have four numbers that are multiplied. So you could view this if you wanted to as though it's 2 times 10 to the 5th times 8.5 times 10 squared. Once you see it that way, what could you do to make this problem a whole lot easier? Go back to like one of the first examples. If it's all multiplication, we can change order, right? So if you take kind of the normal numbers, you could look at as though it's 2 times 8.5. What's 2 times 8.5? 17. That's 2 times 8 is 16, and then 2 times a half is another 1. So we have 17 here. And then we had, still to go, we have, so these two together give us the 17. Then we'd still have that 10 to the 5th times a 10 squared, which then would be times 10 to the... Seventh, we add the exponent. Still good? So you could, in theory, say the answer is 17 times 10 to the seventh, but typically with scientific notation, they try to do one number and then the decimal. So 1.7 times 10 to the eighth or sixth? Eighth, because we move the decimal point one over still to the left. So 1.7 times 10 to the eighth. Or you could view it as though 17 times 10 to the seventh well, a 1.7, you'd have to multiply by 10 to get up to 17. So it's kind of like you have this 10 to the 7th here times one more 10.